Hi, this is Ofori, the digital reader, and um, last week I did a video on how to pull DRM from Kindle Books and how to pull DRM from Adobe Digital Editions. And this week I kind of want to talk about, to be honest, if you don't want to be bothered with that. So in this video I'm going to be talking about some ways that you can legit get books that have no DRM. You don't have to convert them or anything like that. You just download the book and it's an EPUB that has no DRM. I'm also going to be talking about the three favorite sites that I go to to get books um, that have no DRM to begin with. And I don't have to do anything except add them to my collection. So uh, first, I guess I want to start a uh, big picture. And all of the sites I talk about I'm going to include the links in my description just so you can jump there and play around with it if you want because um, some stuff I might gloss over a bit because this is I really want to touch on my three favorite sites but there is sometimes people don't realize how many places will sell you DRM book not, books without DRM that are actually good books to read so uh, first big picture there is a site, uh, Libreture, um, and it's based, Libreture is a, basically a program that creates a, a cloud that you can put books in and then you can use their app to read books off that cloud and it keeps them updated. But that's not what I'm here for. Actually, I, when, I might review this, it's, review them at some point. But what they also do is they keep a list of DRM free bookshops and they update it regularly. And this list is huge. I'm just gonna kinda scroll down a bit so you can kinda see. So I'm gonna stop here just to show you that is where my cursor is. So there is a lot more sites and a ton of sites. I'm still scrolling down. They, are, they have short descriptions. So let's see what that is. My gut tells me Hyphen Punk is a magazine that has steampunk fiction. And once again, if you buy it from Hyphen Punk, there's going to be no DRM. So they have a ton of stuff. I'll include the link so you can kind of go through and see if there's some place that has stuff that interests you. But I just wanted to show you that to kind of show you the breadth of different places that offer DRM free books. So now what I'm going to jump into is the three sites I use the most and my favorites. And the first site that I use is Project Gutenberg. Project Gutenberg has held me down for years. As a matter of fact, I donate five dollars a month to them every month and I've been doing that for years just because I use them often. Um, basically, if there's a book that was created in the early 20th century or the 19th century and I want to read it or I hear about it or somebody recommends it to me, Project Gutenberg is the first place that I'm going to check. Um, Project Gutenberg also, when you want to get a book, one nice thing about Project Gutenberg is they give you several different ways to download it. You can do it in Kindle format, you can do it in EPUB, and remember, if, for example, let's say you do it in EPUB format, any place, anything that you're using that uses EPUB can read it. If you do it in Kindle format, of course, that means only the Kindle would be able to use it. But still, it would not have any um, digital rights management. So if there was something that uses the Kindle's format without the digital rights management, and some e-readers do, then you could totally go ahead and do that. Uh, one of the downsides, and they also have information about the book, which is kind of nice, um, but one of the downsides of Project Gutenberg is you kind of have to know the name of the book you're looking for because their search and browse is kind of clanky. So, for example, if you're doing a book search, they have quick searches, they have popular, latest, random, but, let's, but they don't really do things like recommend books. 
it's not very advanced. So you kind of have to know the name of the book. Um, their latest releases. It, I chuckle sometimes when I see Project Gutenberg with their latest releases. Because what they actually mean is these are the most recent books that have fallen out of copyright that we have, um, you know, put onto this site. So their latest release could be 180 years old. You know, it just depends. So um, once again, when you look at this, you can see um, it's not really well formatted. It's kind of clanky. But if you know the name of what you're looking for, it's great. And usually if I hear about a book or somebody talks about a book and I go to Amazon and I see that book and I see it's an older book, I'll go here see if I can download it for free because usually that person who's putting that book on Amazon is probably getting it from Project Gutenberg tarting it up a little bit and then putting it on Amazon for $4.99 so you know they're not you know I'm not paying that much just to have them put a little forward in the book or reformat it I'm fine with the way it's formatted in Project Gutenberg now I should say, I should say that but there is another kind of offshoot service that's a little bit different from Project Gutenberg, and that's called Standard Ebooks. And basically, what Standard Ebooks does is they get books from Project Gutenberg, they're very clear about it, and they reformat them, they update them, they make sure that they work with the most modern technology, and they add metadata. Um, you know, they kind of, they make their typography good and they do all of this. The book is still free. So you don't have to pay for the book. They just kind of do this as a public service. And they do ask that you donate to keep that service going. I generally don't use standard ebooks much because in all of the years I've been reading books from Project Gutenberg, maybe out of five books I read, maybe there might be 10 things misspelled out of all those five books combined. So that's not a big issue for me. Also, if I'm going to donate money, I want to donate money to the original source, which is Project Gutenberg. Um, since they're pulling books from Project Gutenberg, if I do get a book from them just because, you know, I want something that has the most modern formatting and, um, and metadata. If I get a book from them, then yeah, I might donate a dollar. But usually, I can't think of the times I've really used this service that much. I get all my stuff from Project Gutenberg. But if you want something that looks a little prettier, that is a little bit better formatted, standard ebooks is fine. You know, drop them 50 cents, drop them a dollar if you get a book from there but my I really hope and recommend if you're going to be using Project Gutenberg donate to them keep this service going keep them adding books um, you know that are out of copyright so that you know when an older book is out of copyright a lot of times what will happen is a publisher just will stop publishing it there are some books you know that you'll never get an ebook of because the publisher just figured it's not worth our trouble anymore. You know, if it's not like a, a real classic, then they can't be bothered. So Project Gutenberg, I use a lot. I love it. That is the first site that I use. The next site that I use is Smashwords. And Smashwords basically is an indie author site where a lot of independent authors are and you basically any book you buy from Smashwords it has no DRM it's just as simple as that you buy the book from Smashwords it has no DRM it does it it, it will be in the EPUB format um, so if you have a Kindle then you would just use send a Kindle and it will convert it to Kindle format automatically with send a Kindle and you could just keep the EPUB wherever you want to keep files that you want to keep keep track of a very cool thing about Smashwords is that a lot of these independent authors 
you know, some of them are people who are independent and this is the only place they're posting. But a lot of them are putting their books also on Amazon and also on Kobo in their unlimited, um, in Kobo Unlimited and Amazon Unlimited. Now, I am a digital owner, so I like to own my books. So that's why I don't use Kindle Unlimited or Kobo Unlimited because if I like a book, I want to own it. So if you are using Kindle Unlimited and there is an author who you really like and you want to dip your toe into ownership, check and see if that owner has something here because there's a lot of indie authors who have their books here and a, a lot of um, established authors who are doing side projects or maybe they want to do some independent um, publishing for a specific project they're working on. A lot of times their work can show up here. Now, I keep my wish my main wish list my main book wish list on Amazon just for ease of use and so for example let me just jump to Amazon and pull up my book list and so this is the book list my main book list these are all the books that are kind of in my queue to pick up and it, it's different you know some mainstream some not uh, a lot of times I will read some indie authors, um, you know, uh, authors who aren't, whose books aren't mainstream or, or authors I discovered, um, you know, through recommendations from Amazon. And if you, and looking at my Kindle wish list, it's a good number of books here. But the cool thing is, if I go to Smashwords and I go to my uh, wish list for Smashwords, all of these books here are also on Amazon. But of course, they have DRM attached. So I can get these books on Amazon and be forced to do some trick DRM stuff, or I can see if it's on Smashwords, and if it is, put it on my wish list, and then when I download it, it has no DRM. I mean, usually I put books in my Amazon wish list, and then when I'm ready to buy the book, I kind of cycle. I see if it's on Project Gutenberg, if it's an older book. I see if it's on Smashwords. And then I see if it's on the third site that I'm going to talk about. And so with Smashwords, once again, super easy. Another cool thing about Smashwords is sometimes they have some really, really great sales. So that's why I always see if the uh, book is on Smashwords. Another cool thing is if there's an author you like, you can actually check with the author, check the author on Smashwords because a lot of times the author may have some books that they wrote that they put on Smashwords before they blew up and you still might like that author or their style. A perfect example for me is a book that I recently read that I really liked called um, Purity by Douglas Clegg. I really like that book and so after I read it, I was like, you know, let me just take a look and see, since I hadn't heard of Douglas Clegg a lot, I was like, let me just take a look and see if he has anything on Smashwords. And the sequel to the Purity book was on Smashwords, the words. The third place I go isn't actually a site, it's kind of a brand. Um, the Macmillan Publishing Group, they have an arm Tor Publishing, which probably, if you're a fantasy or science fiction reader, you've totally heard of Tor Fiction. And Tor Fiction and Publishing, they specialize mostly in fantasy, horror, science fiction, but they have big names. They have serious heavy hitters as far as fantasy, science fiction, they have romance, fantasy, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and the reason uh, why I like Tor is because I would say probably 80% of Tor's stable of books are DRM free. As a matter of fact, they request that their books are DRM free. So whatever site you buy them from, they will have no DRM. It's a quick and easy way to kind of find out if that's the case. And what you do is you kind of go to the website look up the book if 
if this the author of the book and you can kind of see they'll have a statement I'll show you what I mean in a minute so let's go to um, the Mc, to Tor's website and as I said it's the Macmillan Publishing Group um, but it's the Tor Publishing Group which is kind of a subset of them and what you can do is if you have an author that you are interested in and their book is being published by Tor, you can actually quickly check to see if there's DRM in the book. Let's just jump to Amazon. Uh, let me jump to Amazon real quick. And let's look up Legends and Lattes. And if you look up Legends and Lattes, what you can do is just scroll down till you see the author. which is in the product details and you can see it's tour book so if you see it's a tour book you can kind of jump to their site and pull up the book go to the ebook and if you look at the information you can see at the publisher's request this title is being sold without digital rights management software DRM applied. That means all the places that sell this book it won't have DRM. That means even on Amazon it won't have DRM but it will be in Amazon's format and Amazon's format is called currently AZW so you can download it it'll be in AZW format. You can use any e-reader that can read AZW format where normally if it's an AZW format it'll have digital rights management attached which means you can only read it with Kindles and the Kindle app. There are several e-readers and programs that can read AZW format without the dig digital rights management attached. So. Um, that's a quick and easy way to see if the book uh, for Tor has DRM. What I generally like to do and the way I like to use it is not to look at each individual book. I, once again, I, I pull DRM anyway. But one cool thing I like to do with the Tor book, Tor books, is I just kind of like to look at their books. They have some decent books and some decent, decent authors. And like I said, 80% of these books aren't going to have DRM. If I see the book's not going to have DRM, then what I'll usually do is I'll go ahead and I will uh, go to whatever site I want to go to. I like to go to ebooks.com and get my book from there. So that's it. Those are the three big ways that I get books that have no DRM where I'm not having to do anything tricky or anything like that. I, can, I get books from Tor. I get books from Smashwords, and I get books from um, the Gutenberg um, the Gutenberg project. Um, any questions? Shoot me a link in the comments. This is Ofori, the digital reader.